Hi guys, uh, Russell Lowe speaking. Uh, this tutorial is looking at uh, some poly modeling tips uh, that might help you out with creating some uh, three dimensionally curving blobby type things. Uh, so to start off with uh, we select a, um, a box uh, object type from the standard primitives click and drag out an object. You can see that uh, it's just one single box and you can see it's got length, segments, height and uh, width segments over here. We can crank those up and you can see in the other views it starts giving you some information about uh, how many times the face is subdivided. If we hit the F4 key it uh, shows it in the perspective window um, and Alt W makes that perspective window bigger and Alt middle mouse um, will let you um, rotate uh, the thing. If you just hold middle mouse button that's panning it so you use those things a lot and rotate with the rolling the middle mouse button. Um, I should say that uh, to convert or if your units aren't in centimeters they um, they should be. Uh, so go into customize unit setups and you can change them here into centimeters from whatever it was before metric and system unit setup one unit equals one centimeter and uh, to begin with mine were on millimeters and I changed them to centimeters um, in the last time I tried this demo. Uh, the reason why we're using centimeters is so that we can uh, create objects in 3ds Max and import them directly into Crisis and they'll be the same scale. Um, so this is 90 centimeters wide. Um, I'm going to uh, right click somewhere in the grey area and it's going to stop deselect uh, using um, the box object type which is kind of handy. Um, so Alt and Middle Mouse to spin the thing around. I'm going to right click on the object and convert to an editable poly. Um, I can always also go into its modify tab and right click in there and convert to editable poly. So two different places. I'm going to do a sub selection of a, a polygon face and hold down control and select multiple ones at once. Then I'm going to hit extrude and click and drag that up and click and drag it up a couple of times and you can see the reason why I'm doing it a couple of times is so that I can um, get these sort of leftover um, leftover things going on. So I'm just going around here and just generally messing around with the thing with the extrude and then uh, maybe fine. Uh, you can also select um, vertices, drag around them, hit the W key for move and you can sort of get some um, more dramatic sort of movements going on there select those ones, move them all up, which is different than an extrude, they're just shifting um, shifting vertices around. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go back to the face again and um, hit that one there and go bevel. The bevel is like an extrude uh, except that you've got a second operation. So you can click and drag and then you can say um, go in or out. So in and then out. Lovely. Uh, another one in here is the um, uh, inset and if I click that one and drag I get an um, inset uh, polygon that I can then extrude. Um, I don't know what happens if I do multiple ones of those. Let's see. Oh, well, that's kind of handy. Then extrude. Oh, well, that's kind of handy, isn't it? Okay, so um, those are a couple of those tools. Um, what I'll do is I'll make a bit of a towery thing up here, and then I'll make a towery thing up here, and then what I'm going to do is select that face say there and delete it. I'm going to select that face there and delete it and then I'm going to get the expand this to see its sub uh, object menu. I could have dragged up here to, to see it as well um, but when it's hidden you can see it here too. Max does that a little bit um, showing things in two places 
I'm going to select the border around that missing bit and a border around that missing bit then I'm going to go bridge if I hit the settings one you can see it's um, a bridge between those two holes so I can hit segments um, I can uh, twist give it a nice little twist there that's usually to um, correct the balls up um, uh, so if it, you do find that it's twisted um, you can untwist it usually uh, go OK to that so that bridges between things I should be able to bridge let's try between that and that it's a bit more interesting so border there and uh, control and select the other border and then bridge those two yeah that's kind of more interesting isn't it and go oh, see it's remembering the thing I'll create a few of those taper don't know what oh, okay it's interesting and bias I guess that just says where the taper occurs and smooth will just be uh, how smooth but oh, the angle between each surface so we've got some things um, uh, the angle between each surface that it uh, uh, shows a smooth flowing surface from um, <coughs> excuse me um, you're thinking this is um, horrendously beautiful uh, with the emphasis on the horrendous but it's not really much good to you just yet so um, what else have we got so I'll turn that off I'll hit render and you can see it did that funny pixelated sort of a thing going on what we want to do is a couple of things get rid of the black background and stop it from being pixelated like that so I'm going to go into the render setup and right down the bottom I'm going to go assign renderer uh, it's got mental row render at the moment going to change that to default scanline render and go OK render it again and you'll see it zap straight down without doing that funny pixelated sort of thing it's not a big deal what we just saw but um, uh, if you've got more detailed things it'll take forever and it's I don't like the look of it anyway um, if I hit the 8 key it brings up the environment and effects and into the background color I'll go OK and um, notice you could even use a use map and then pick a picture to put in the background use that wisely um, so if we uh, now to this I'll add a um, a smooth modifier mesh smooth uh, mesh smooth there we go and you can see we've got um, iterations one crank that up to two to smooth it off a little bit more and then uh, use uh, show cage and that shows you the shape of the thing that we're um, manipulating if I can come into here and go grab edges and I can select those and start manipulating it um, R is hotkey for scale for some reason um, W is the hotkey for move so select those go W and move them um, and I'll move those and then uh, what would be good to show you rotate maybe we'll select all that stuff there and then hit the E key for rotate and bend that around sort of 90 degrees ish okay um, so select out of that the other thing I showed you the other day select it again sorry and add a um, uh, add a lattice now if nothing happens I might have had a sub object selection going and I thought I might have but I didn't um, if nothing happens then clear out of it uh, actually I'll do that I have that selected and now add a lattice and it should just try and lattice that one little point oh no it's alright um, change the radius of the struts which are the things in between put that down to um, uh, 0.5 and then change this one 
down to 0.5 as well which is the joints and now you can see we've got a nice little wireframey thing going on um, zoom in a little bit closer and you can see that it's actually kind of interesting the way it's all looping over itself um, next thing I'm going to do is create a box underneath it you can see it's remembering those um, settings from last time so I'll just get rid of those um, amount of uh, subdivisions and then right click in here to stop making boxes create a material um, we want to come to here and choose a standard material ok I'm going to click and drag that onto there, I'm going to create two standard materials uh, click the diffuse drop it down to white ok and then I can drag that onto my box and I can drag it onto my object as well um, or you can select an object and then go assign material to selection which is sometimes a lot faster when it's um, when when it is um, sorry that's my phone going off I've got to be going shortly uh, that's sometimes easier when you've got a whole lot of different objects in the scene uh, and it's hard to control which one you're dropping the um, object onto um, the next step I'm going to um, stick a light in the scene so if I go into lights and it's on photometric in here I'm going to change that to standard and change it to a omni light click in the scene somewhere click W to stick it up um, and then put it back somewhere where we get it we'll get a nice shadow maybe over here somewhere that'll do and I'm um, going to the modify uh, tab for that turn on ray trace shadows which is a default position shadow parameters drop the density down to 0.7 that way they won't be black and they'll be a little bit more convincing um, and then click the teapot and get another get another render um, your renders might take a bit longer this is a fast machine anyway so that's um that's what a ray trace looks like um, accurate shadows if we turn on turn on um, uh, shadow map that'll be softer shadows and it should render faster um, and you can see maybe a little bit more convincing um, the reason why I put the box there is so that it have something to cast a shadow onto um, what I'm going to do now is delete that um, omni light I'm going to make this lattice a bit bigger so two centimeters and two cent sorry um, two centimeters just so that they're a bit bigger and then stick a um, skylight in the reason why I made them bigger is so there's more of a surface and uh, for the skylight to do its thing on and then uh, turn down the turn on cast shadows and turn this down to five um, that, that achieves a couple of things one it um, makes it a lot faster to render you can see how it's quite slow to render anyway um, but uh, dropping that to 5 um, makes it a lot faster than if it was 20 it would take sort of 10 minutes and um, it also gives you the speckly sort of effect which um, which is kind of nice it makes it look like uh, grey plastic or somebody's made a model out of MDF and spray painted it uh, primer grey ok so that's one um, that's one object uh, I'm going to make another video um, with something else in it that I just learned um, and I'm pretty excited about so uh, come back for video number two that'll be called uh, uh, creating um, ruled surfaces between lines uh, it's probably a lot more interesting than it sounds Anyway, cheers.